Okay, hi, welcome to another episode of Not A Few Newbies Hit and Misses. Um, so we're now on to episode three, which will be John Pertwee, who was my favourite doctor for quite a long time and then sort of changed as my taste changed and everything. So, yeah. So three stories to avoid if you're new to the fandom and three to recommend. Simply what this list is, as I've said before in my previous two episodes. So we'll just get straight into it. Uh, so three episodes to avoid, which again are just based in chronological order and not in terms of my opinions of the stories. First one is Colony in Space. So um, this is during the sort of Masters era when he was basically the main villain back to back. Um, this is just the weakest one of that bunch uh, just because the whole thing sort of feeling a little bit I think just slow paced. I uh, was just trying to remember it and it did just feel kind of dull as an overall story, which again, it doesn't reflect anything about the stories that have involved Roger Delgado's master, who I think is the best master. Uh, but yeah, this is one to avoid just because it doesn't have as much of the kind of elements of interest that you have from the era and there's not as much like action that you get from this. So like, you get some Doctor Who stories that don't have a decent amount of action in them and this one just, it lacks it, so it doesn't reflect the series at its best with that. So I would avoid that episode um, as a starting point, again, just the more episodes you watch and the more taste we get for John Pertwee, you could watch it later on, but just not good for for that one. Next one is the Time Monster. Um, this isn't really so much for me as much as just the overall general opinion. People do consider this to be quite a weak story. Um, I personally don't mind it so much, um, but it it does have quite a few obvious like flaws and stuff with it in terms of its overall plot elements. I don't really want to say too much and give away spoilers and stuff, but um it just it does lack in a few areas and it again it just kind of drags out a bit too long. It's six parts long whereas it could have probably been dealt with in four parts. So um this is kind of like a thing I would say unfortunately again it does feature Roger Gardo's master. It doesn't reflect too well but it's nothing against him. It's just a story overall it's just not been written the best. Um, so I would avoid it in that kind of regard, just because if most people have a general distaste for a story, it's better to just generally avoid it overall, if you want to get into the series. Uh, and then the last one for the avoiding is the invasion of the dinosaurs. Get this a little bit close, because sometimes you can't see it too well. There we go. Um, so... It's a bit of a mixture of the thing of the DVD itself, as well as the story. Uh, the effects for the dinosaurs, the original ones anyway, I think they did an updated one with this for some more, some better looking effects and stuff, but they are incredibly, incredibly cheap. And again, it's just one of these things where the story just feels like it drags out for too long and it didn't need to be six parts long and it could have easily been four parts. Um, and also the thing with the DVD itself is episode one is not recolorized that well. They only, they only had it in black and white but it just didn't look that good when it was brought back into colour compared to the likes of Planet of the Daleks Episode 3, for example, which, again, was in black and white only for the VHS releases and then got re-released on DVD with a colourisation. But yeah, this one's just, again, it's very weak, just very sort of slow-paced, cheap-looking and just drags out. So, again, one to avoid um, if you're new to the series. So those three are the ones that I would avoid, and again, in a chronological order. And then moving on to the three which I recommend, and again this one I think I might put as one of my top ten favourites of all time, and probably one of the most important stories I think overall in Dot Two's history. Spearhead from Space. This is the one with the O-ring cover on it, if you're wondering what this is. Um, so, first ever story shot in colour, first ever story to be shot um, using film cameras rather than film and television cameras, which have been a mixture before depending on when they, people are. Um, very, very intriguing story. Love the sort of realism about it um, and just the overall sort of tone of it. And the Autons in this are quite creepy looking, to say the least. So, yeah, I think a very good, strong opening story for a Doctor. And one I would highly, I would highly recommend just as an overall story. And like I said, it's one of my favourites, I'd say, ever. And it never cease to be. I've seen it a lot of times and again, just I never grow tired of it. Um, then next up for recommendations is The Mind of Evil. Uh, so it's essentially Doctor Who meets James Bond. And anytime they do that, it works out very, very nicely. You've got a very intriguing plot line, like I say, with these sorts of things. 
um, there's a decent amount of action in this. It's very good to like two genres being combined together with the sci-fi and the action. Everything about it is super tense um, when you come to certain points in it. It's just very gripping. You never know which way it's going to go. And I just think it's a very strong episode for the Masters, you know, Masters arc. Um, and like I said, just a very good story. And that was signed by Richard Franklin, if you're wondering. Uh, he played Captain Yates in the series. And then finally, for my recommendations, Three Doctors, the 10th anniversary episode. And I think a very strong one of that. It's the only time that you see all the original Doctors together. Um, story's good. Villain's good. Um, very nice blend of sci-fi and just a very good overall feeling story. Like, you get a right balance of every character that there needs to be. Obviously, not so much the first Doctor because he was ill in real life, so they couldn't include him as much. But they get the correct balance of what needed to be, um, what needed to be done with this. And it just feels like a very strong story overall. So yeah, that's um, that's it for my recommendation for that one, and I shall catch you next time for when I do Tom Baker. So it's a long take care.